Ferguson, good morning. Um, thank you again for joining me in today's uh, conversation uh, about both of our books. And thank you for having me, Philip. My pleasure. I am so excited to have this opportunity to discuss Baptism by Flame, 10 Steps to Ignite Your Light Within, and your experience behind that book. Um, and then we can discuss uh, my book as well, Fat is in 24602, which we both had a chance to uh, look at each other's books and come up with some questions that can help our readers and potential readers become a little more familiar with our work. Definitely. So let me just jump into our conversation with the first question that I have for you. Um, so if you can tell me what was your motivation for writing your book? My book is meant to not only be a memoir about dying and coming back to life from a house fire that I had in 1998. Um, it, was, it started out as being a memoir about, about that and going into a burn ward. I had third degree burns over 30% of my body and I literally had to be resuscitated during one of the skin grafting operations. So that in itself felt like a book. But as I was writing it throughout the years uh, after the fire, I realized I'm having a pretty amazing spiritual journey <laughs> after this, you know? Uh -huh. And I felt that the book needed to be longer than just the fire, that the fire was actually just a chapter within the journey. And so it took me many years to write this book because it took me many years to go on the spiritual journey that I was on. And after I realized that it was going to be this spiritual journey um, story, I realized I didn't want it to just be something for the reader to read. I wanted them to go on the journey as well with me. So then it became a workbook. <laughs> so there's an online, um, there's an online uh, part of the book as well, where the reader can go through at the end of each chapter. There's some songs there, there's, um, there's you know, exercises for them to go through, to journal about, and there's also some guided meditations. So I really wanted to help the reader go on their own, you know, have their own baptism by flame without having to end up in a burn ward and you know, burn down their house like I did. <laughs> and that definitely, reading your book, it was definitely quite the experience, and I don't oh. know how I would have come through that experience. Um, but regarding the uh, 10 steps, so uh, the chap, the work, the links to your website, The mm -hmm. Healing Woods, are the 10 steps that you mentioned in the title of the book, correct? Mm -hmm. to yes. Help, to help the reader, okay. Yeah, it's 10 chapters, basically, is the book. And so each chapter leads you um, on my journey, like what I had to do within that step in my world, but then you can go through your world, you know, on the website and, and go through that journey as well in a much safer space. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, absolutely. I have to say, when I was reading your book, first of all, you're quite the talented writer. It was so Aww. conversational in, in its tone and it's very inviting and you're incredibly open to your experience and sharing with the reader everything you went to in incredible detail. I, I, I was so taken back by how much you revealed of yourself um, and, your, and your pain and your inner um, struggles with all of the different areas that you mentioned um, that I think a lot of readers can relate to. Uh, you know, we all go through this desire of wanting to fit in and, you know, going through your life and, and what you were dealing with. Really tragic stuff, but I think so many readers go through similar experiences, maybe not at the level of what you, what you did, mm -hmm. but it, it helps the reader to know there is, there's light at the end and this is how you, you got there. And I think, go ahead. And, and what I'd like to add to that is, you know, it's not just that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, it's that there's a light inside of all of us, even when we're in the dark. 
and that was what I wanted, you know, the reader to access as their light within and, and really ignite that so they can see through that tunnel. I mean, life is a tunnel, really. <laughs> I feel like we're never, you know, as happy as we can be and as on the bright side we can be. There's always going to be darkness. There's always going to be, you know, something. I, I call myself a shadow worker, not a light worker. You know, there's the big term light worker in, in spirituality right now and in the healing world. And I truly believe that we cannot ignore our shadow. We need to use that that part of us as well. Um, and yes, be in the light and be happy and, and you know have the, the good thoughts. But I really wanted to help the people who were maybe kind of stuck in that darkness and let them know that no matter what happens, <laughs> like no matter what happens, you have that light within you. And here's some steps in order to get yourself through. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> that actually leads into the next question that I have, nice. which is um, Reiki. You mentioned Reiki in the book, and you talk about energy work and healing. But for those who may not be familiar with what Reiki is, can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So Reiki is a, it's a Japanese modality. It originated in Japan, and there was, there was Dr. Yusui who... He worked in, with medicines, you know, Japanese medicine, but he knew that there was another way. He, he wanted to find another way to help people on a more spiritual level um, and more energetic level. And so he did a three-week meditation where he climbed up to the top of Mount Karama in Japan and just did nothing but meditate and drink water. <laughs> and on the last day of the third week, he downloaded all the images for Reiki. There's different symbols for the different levels and, um, and showed it to Japan. And it was pretty, pretty secret and pretty sacred to, you know, um, to his students and they didn't really like let on a lot about Reiki but luckily a woman um, came from her name is Mrs. Takata Hawaii Takata she came from Hawaii to Japan to receive some healing and then she came back to the United States and brought it to the United States and so today basically what Reiki is um, you know it used to be a thing that you would learn you know Reiki one was a year-long uh, class and you kind of lived Reiki you know with Dr. Yusui and in the training kind of in a monastic kind of way but now it's like life has changed <laughs> we're in 2017 people are learning Reiki a lot quicker but it's still that same beautiful energy and basically what it is is I'm not putting my energy into somebody else I'm also not taking their energy into me it's a universal light energy which I'm a conduit of that goes through me to that person and Reiki energy helps with um, physical physical stuff, any physical pain, you know, levels of hormones, all that kind of stuff, things going on with your physical body. It also helps with emotions and um, it also helps just to clear your head, helps with sleep. So it helps on like all these different, you know, the three levels, body, mind, and spirit. And when I found out what Reiki was, um, you know, there, I talk a lot about it in the book where I had this healing come in um, while I was in the burn ward and I didn't know what Reiki was at that time but once I got out of the hospital and my healing took like half of the time that the doctor told me it was going to take he thought I was going to be in there for another month getting skin graft after skin graft and um, one night I just had a dark night of the soul and I said please help me to whoever was listening you know spiritually and that's when this Reiki the, this energy came in I didn't know it was Reiki at the time but it came in and within days, my skin grafts started to take, as they say, you know, he kept saying they're not taking, we need to keep doing them until your skin starts growing. And after that, that energetic experience that I write more of in the book, um, I was out within a week. <laughs> wow. And after that, I went on this huge journey, like to shamans, to crystal healers, angel healers, like all these different um, energetic workers. And when I had my first Reiki session, that was when I realized, like, this is the clean, pure energy that I felt in that hospital. And this is my, my passion. And this is why I'm here. This is why I was, like, brought back to life, is to teach it, to spread it, and to let as many people in the world know about it. And that's another reason why I wrote this book, is to kind of get, you know, the, uh, get the 411 out there about Reiki in another way, too. <laughs> that is incredible. And... Um reading your book and seeing how you progress on your journey 
uh, was incredibly enlightening. Um, you know, having done a lot of energy work myself um, in the community, uh, I was able to relate to so much of what you shared. Um, you know, hearing about your experience with that beautiful tree uh, mm. that you go back to every year, your connection with nature. Um, I, I don't think I have met anyone who seems to be as connected with nature as you seem to be. And it's quite a beautiful experience to hear and to read about. Um, and, and how that has been such a vital part of your, I guess, your transformative experience. Um, and I, it makes me want to go and visit that same tree. And oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I tell everybody that needs to be a bucket list for every human being on this planet to go to the redwoods. You know, the redwood forests, they're only, you know, they're, they're like one speck on the earth. There's not, it's not like pine trees where you can find them all over the place. Like the redwoods are just in one little section and they are vast and, and amazing. They're, they really are ancient giants. <laughs> wow. And the connection to, to, I, I feel source and spirit is is so strong in those trees because they are the tallest living things. They're sometimes they're they're the biggest living things. I mean, they're just like they scream peace <laughs> and scream power. You know, when you walk in those in those beautiful forests. So yes, do go. <laughs> Absolutely, that's definitely going to be one of the places we want to go on our next vacation up north. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um. Would you like to share a little bit more about your, um, you know, having gone through your burning experience, um, about um, uh, how how others can relate to that um, in 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 their own journey? Well, I feel we all go through our own baptisms in life, right? Mine just happened to be using fire, you know, some people go through a deep depression, you know, and it's a baptism by emotion, you know, some people go through something hugely physical, you know, like a heart attack or, you know, any other type of, um, you know, illness. So I feel that we all have this kind of, you know, come to spirit moment <laughs> where we have to learn to fight, we have to learn to fight for our lives in a, in a way, you know. And so that mine happened to be fire, and and I did happen, you know, I I had a big talk with the universe because it seemed like the, my first three um, decades of life were, as you read in the book, there was like me being, you know, hit by a car, and then I had a colon resection, you know, there was all these crazy medical things happening to me, these accidents, and I finally sat down with the universe and I said, all right, look. <laughs> <laughs> this body's getting older. I need to not, you know, have these these huge eruptions happen in my life. And so now I find that I'm 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 because I've worked with the Reiki energy and I've worked with with the universe and with with Source. You know, now I'm learning them more on a on a mental and emotional level, which is nice. <laughs> Wonderful. So I feel that you know, my hope within this book is that people can learn some tools. In which, if they are having a lot of like, and some people get nothing but emotional stuff, and they want like a little break, you know, and working with these tools that you can hopefully turn around, you know, how it is you're dealing with the stuff that comes up because stuff is always going to happen in life. Nobody's life is you know puppies and rainbows all the time, but these Reiki and meditation and the tools that I share with people that can help you be strong within the non puppies and rainbows parts of life. <laughs> I love that, which actually gets into the next question of um, the Healing Woods. Um, share with us about what the Healing Woods is and how you coach healers. Yeah, so the Healing Woods, I named it that because of my huge connection with the Redwoods. And the Redwoods is where I go, you know, at least once a year, sometimes more, to just heal, heal myself. I view my tree, it's, it's this huge, huge redwood in the middle of, uh, middle of the forest where it was hit by lightning. So it was burnt at one point in its life and it was on fire. And how, how it happens with redwoods is they're so filled with water that even though they're struck by lightning, they just smolder for a while and then there becomes a little hole, right? And so I can go inside of the hole of this trunk and it's like the size of, you know, a small bedroom. <laughs> and 
I really see that as like my human cell phone charger. Like I will just sit in there and just, you know, get in that energy of nature and of, of, of the redwoods and bring it down south to Southern California where I live. And um, so I decided, you know, that's where I go get my healing and I want to further the, the healing of the woods to the people of the city. So I called it the Healing Woods. And yeah, I focused on Reiki, you know, teaching Reiki, all levels of Reiki. And then I decided, well, I, I got to a point where I was pretty busy and I am pretty busy as far as doing like, you know, clients and all that kind of stuff. So I decided I need to empower <laughs> other healers. I need to empower my students, first of all, you know. So when I teach people Reiki, it's not just about like, this is how you do Reiki. I also teach them how to build a business if that's something that they want to do. And I take my 15 years of advertising, I was in the advertising industry, I take that knowledge and help healers who sometimes don't have that, <laughs> you know, they just kind of want to help the world and do the good thing, but they don't know how to really market themselves or even charge, you know, things like that. So I feel like the more full-time healers we have in this world, and, you know, I, I almost see it as building an army of healers to counteract the armies of destruction that are, like, all over the place that have been in full power for too long. So we've got these these fierce warriors of healing coming up, and it's beautiful. <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> and thank God there were individuals like you out there helping get that army together. Yeah, definitely. And the beautiful thing about Reiki as well is you can send it across oceans, right? So I work with people all over the world. And so I want to really focus more on helping the people that can't really necessarily get to me. So I work with people virtually all the time. I do my coaching virtually. I've coached healers all over the place. Um, and let the, the more local people, let them be be healed as far as the Reiki goes with my students, right? So I, I, I see myself as moving more into a space of doing the coaching and doing the distance healing and not so much trying to focus on building a, a local business because I've already kind of almost gotten to the point of being inundated with the local, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, saturated the local market. Yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful. What is... Uh, from here forward, what what are your goals, or where do you see yourself going? Well, <laughs> I definitely want to. I want to live in a little town that has three hundred and eleven people in it, <laughs> and it's surrounded by redwoods. It's 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 a beautiful, beautiful, amazing, magical place. But what I need to do is, you know, focus more on. Um, Getting the book out there, I feel that the book is very important for me to focus on as far as, you know, um, planning a book tour and trying to get it, you know, out there so more people can learn about Reiki, more people can learn about what I do and how I can help them, either as a, a business coach for healers and mystics or as their Reiki master. And um, at that point, shifting away from, you know, living in the big city and bringing the energy of the Redwoods to the big city to living in the in the redwoods and coming and visiting the city, you know, for friends and family. Um, I feel it's very important, and I feel I have another book or two in me as well, but I feel that this next book uh, needs to come in from a person, you know, from me as a person living in the woods instead of visiting, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it totally does. And being through your book, I saw there were several mentions of this can be an entire book just in itself. And right, I right. saw that every time I you, you wrote that, I thought, absolutely, there are so many areas where I felt you can dive off into mm -hmm. and take the reader on a whole other journey, but right. it, it, it definitely is its own story in itself. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that is excellent. Again, love your book, love that you mm -hmm. presented it to the world, you gave birth to this experience, and I know individuals who read it are going to get an awfully lot of help. I mean, for me, just hearing your story and being able to relate to it, so many different aspects of it, including your surgery. You mentioned your diverticulitis situation. Mm -hmm. I had that same experience, the same fistula between the, the bladder and... and oh my gosh. Um, uh, I, I was in the hospital. They had to do all the procedures, but luckily it cleared up after they drained it. But I thought, Oh my God, this woman has gone through the same thing I did. So 
I just felt connected through the whole book. Like, this is speaking to me personally. So thank you uh-huh. just for that. No, um, that's a book. Wow. <laughs> but I, I, exactly. I, I yelled to my husband, like, you're not going to believe what I just read. You know, she had <laughs> this experience, and this is what... And then she went forward, and, you know, it was just... It was quite the journey. So thank you for being so... Uh, so honest and transparent and sharing that giving of yourself because it's not an easy thing to do to share your life in print with individuals yeah. and so it's incredibly brave but you are one brave individual and talented and and generous of spirits thank you for all that you're doing wow. and i know individuals are going to get a lot out of your book Thank you so much, Philip. And it I, it was a learned experience to to be able to share like this because I was not brought up that way. I was brought up to kind of keep everything inside and you know like don't don't express yourself. You know, so I definitely since then have learned. And a lot of it was being in the band and just being able to belt out the the stuff that I wrote. That was the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. But now I'm at the point in life where I'm like, go deep or go home. <laughs> like if I'm not talking about something that's like painful or real you know I, I just I don't want to talk about the weather <laughs> you know? I can't There's do it too much good stuff to talk about exactly <laughs> right I, I get it so thank you love your book thank you thank you well I love I love your writing as well and and I'm so excited I, I'm excited that that the world is starting to take a shift take starting to take a turn um, into more body positive realms, you know, because for so long, I mean, I grew up, I grew up overweight, and you know, a lot of times, I think the reason I was so soft and so silent in, in the beginning as a child was because I, I loved the. What did you write? You said something like um, talking about um, uh, Delilah. She said something like, or you wrote that she didn't care about the space she took in the world. Something like this. Yes. Did yes. I get that right? Yeah, I you, it's cool. very much she, Delilah never apologizes for the space her body yes. requires. <laughs> yes, that's what it was. And I was like, yes, you know, if I knew that as, you know, a teenager, how much, how much, how different would my life have been, you know? And I'm feeling like I'm, I'm getting more in that Delilah, that Delilah way, you know, in life. And I just love that you're writing this, that you wrote this book, you know, okay. that is in 24602. Um, so let me ask you, you know, what is your motivation with writing this book? I have been bemused by... Um, larger people, fat people, chubby, plump, plus size, all of those terms. Um, mm-hmm. Since I was a child, um, and I can't explain why, I have just always been drawn to individuals who happen to be larger and how they were treated, um, which, you know, growing up, you know, we realize when you are growing up chubby, as, as I did, um, the world is not always a welcoming place. Mm-hmm. And it makes an individual incredibly self-conscious beyond the normal adolescent, childhood, self-conscious issues that everyone has. When you add being fat on top of that, or chubby, or any, <laughs> any excess poundage beyond average, um, it causes a lot of distress, um, e- emotional... Um, baggage that we can carry around with us and I was not immune to that Um, I remember growing up uh, God I was in sixth grade and there was a a fellow student who was incredibly large and no one wanted to be his friend and I couldn't understand why and so I just went up to him and, and just started hanging out because I felt a need to be able to just be friends with someone who, you know, happened to be larger, and that was the only issue. This was an incredibly bright, smart, funny, articulate boy, and and I thought, well, you know, why, why is it so horrible to the rest of the student body? You know, what what is it about being fat that um, made made this such an awkward situation? People not wanting to be seen with him, and so I really kind of spent a lot of my youth trying to understand that whole dynamic of society and how someone is fat and how it can really affect someone's um, entire person 
Mm-hmm. And once I got into college and, and grad school, um, I had written an essay that got me in um, about, uh, it was fiction, and it was about uh, uh, a world where being fat was against the law. And when I got finally uh, started classes, uh, one of my professors said, okay, this is what you wrote about, you know, let's, let's see what you can do with this. And I was a little surprised. I wasn't expecting to uh, create a whole story around this little, this little essay. But I decided, you know, this could be a great opportunity to really explore um, a whole dystopian world and to show uh, by creating a character named Delilah what what people go through and hopefully by uh, writing the book I've been able to at least address some of the issues that individuals um, uh, know about but may not truly understand that mm-hmm. there is nothing wrong with being chubby plump or plus size or fat and these are not four letter words and Mm -hmm. that there is space in the world for everybody regardless Mm -hmm. of body size and so creating this whole dystopia about a world where being fat is outlawed and just taking that example to the extreme creating this incredibly um, ugly world um, Mm -hmm. that uh, the characters have to persevere in and eventually hopefully in the end without giving anything away um, there's a positive outcome, and uh, so that uh, long-windedly is what created uh, the book. Do you know Delilah? Is she based off of anybody that you know? Um, I think she's fabulous. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I, and I appreciate that, and, and I've heard from other people, I want her to be my best friend. Um, <laughs> She's my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think... Delilah is an amalgamation. She is part of who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, But she's also my mom and so many women that I've known around me, uh, both large and small. Um, And it really is uh, my grandmother as well. And, and, you know, the chubby girls I've known in school and all all of the aspects of of women that I think are just amazing and I really believe women are superior than men but you know that's just my own belief and I say that because there is so much more women are life women give life and and they can endure a whole lot of things that I don't think men could really ever do and so I've always admired women Wonder Woman is one of my favorite icons in the world Um, Mm -hmm. But really, it it's... It reminds me of Wonder Woman, in a way, big time. You, you know? know? And, and, and I like saw her like of, that. You know, <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> so she really, she's, she's, she's put together from all of the wonderful aspects of womanhood that I have personally known and, and kind of rolled it into her. So uh, yeah. it was awfully fun, great character to, to create, and I love that people really enjoy her. She's awesome. So, what is the soul within your book? I really wanted to create a work of social justice. I wanted to take the fat activism that I have always held since childhood um, and do something with it. Um, you know, I've, I've chosen to be a fat man and um, you know, I, it's kind of like I, if I'm going to believe in in this um, activism, you know, I, I want to know what it is that people go through. Um, I think big people are beautiful. I think there is nothing wrong with the enjoyment of being big uh, for those who choose it, uh, for those who don't, that there is nothing wrong with who you are, that we are all beautiful, unique, and wonderful creatures. Um, and... I wanted to make sure that the world had um, a a heroine, a hero, to uh, look up to that, you know, embodies um, beauty and strength and wisdom um, and who doesn't happen to be small and who never apologizes for being fat. Um, 
and who is admired and and powerful and all of those wonderful things but really just to show that you know we 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 tend to only limit positive uh, role models um you know and um, by size and uh, thinness is always a virtue um and there's not a whole lot of plus size role models in the world and i wanted to present you know someone who people can look up to and admire and even you know want to emulate um there's an awfully lot of large people in the world men and women as we know um and being fat is not criminal um it is not horrible and it can even be wonderful and admired and it should have that opportunity and so i i wanted to just present an alternative to the standard um ideals and make sure that thinness was not the only one that made someone worthy or virtuous of of being admired so important and i love that people are telling you that um that she reminds them of Wonder Woman because as a female going out to see the movie Wonder Woman, oh my God, I was just crying the whole time because it's, fi- you know, finally there is in a big movie, you know, a blockbuster, a woman as a warrior, a strong, fierce woman. And now you look at Delilah and you take that even a step further. And not only is she a woman, she doesn't have to be, you know, uh, uh, like a athlete you know she's she's a fat woman and she's fabulous and she's strong and she's fighting for the right you know so i love it i love that you took it even a step further (laughs) i appreciate that and it it means a lot to know that um that you and other readers have been able to connect with her and Mm -hmm. have enjoyed her and it just it thrills me like yes that that she is three she's 3d you know she is present and and uh, someone that people relate to. So thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Thank you for writing her and creating her. So we have the um, novel, and then you decided to transform it into three graphic novels. Can you tell me about that process? Absolutely. So when, in the process of writing the prose novel, um, I met who is now my husband, and he is an illustrator and he wanted to just draw Delilah and (laughs) so he created the cover and he's like but for the novel and he's like but I I want to do more so he started drawing pictures of her and I would tell him no she's a little she's larger than that and he wasn't used to drawing large women I said no she's larger than that and Mm -hmm. so when he finally got her as I described you know, he said, I, I'd like to make this into a graphic novel. Wow. He had always loved comic books. And uh, he'd never had really the opportunity to pursue them. So we tried uh, something with the book, uh, the prose novel, of inserting 18 full-page illustrations in the book. And when he did that, we thought, well, why don't we then take that and create a whole graphic novel just Um, you know of that and we decided okay let's let's we have two parallel projects now so we got the prose novel out and then this year in July we presented the first of three novels uh, graphic novels which are based primarily on Fatizen and it is um, in three sections just because it takes so many illustrations to tell you know the story and so part one is out uh, part two comes out this next year and then part three will probably come out uh, uh, at the end of 2018 and mm-hmm. it gives the individuals who enjoy a visual representation you know there are a lot of people who love comics and graphic novels um, mm-hmm. and it just opens it up to a whole other population of uh, readers and mm-hmm. so there you go and and the response has been really good and we're really excited yeah i you know i've read the the first one and and been able to take in the beautiful artwork and yes the color is amazing and and it just really brings delilah like i'm totally a a fangirl for delilah (laughs) 
but like the way she's she's represented, she's like hot and beautiful, and you know, she's fashionable. Like I love her. She's just fierce. She's totally fierce. I love that. Thank you. Uh, that really makes me happy to hear. <laughs> Um, so, what is Embon Point Publishing, and how did it become what it is today? So, my husband and I, as we're preparing with Fatizen, um, we have been so immersed in the Fatizen universe, and uh, which is not a bad thing, uh, but I had been in it, goodness, since the beginning of grad school in 2009. Um, so we've been heavily immersed, and he's been drawing every day full-time uh, the graphic novel. So he said, you know, because it's taking a while for the whole process to happen, he decided to work on something that he always wanted to finish, which was a detective story with a female detective called Marabu Mule, which, as you know, is a slipper. Um, but this woman is a character he created and he wanted to do a whole series of mysteries um, more like graphic novelettes about 50 pages each and so um, as he drew finished um, taking some old drawings and pulling them together um, we decided why don't we create our own publishing company and put out Marabu um, uh, in the graphic novels called Blanc Noir um, he loves film noir, and so we made it very, you know, it's black and white and, and very, very film noir-ish. Let's do it. So we decided, okay, let's create our own company. And um, so we released uh, Fat is in the Graphic Novel under Embon Point, which in French, Embon Point means plump, and it just seemed appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is what started that. And so we have... Um, two Marabu Mule uh, mysteries out um, under Blanc Noir um, series, and then Fatizen uh, graphic novel will be continued to be published under Embon Point, which is opening up doors, actually, when, you know, I, I think you mentioned this in your book, when you, when you follow, when you decide to open up to the universe and say, you know, I'm ready, and I, you know, how can I how can I move forward? You know, what is the next step? It just comes to you. The next step really just follows when you finally say, I'm ready, and what do I do? Mm -hmm. And so um, through uh, my brother, we were asked to work on a children's book. And so we are also next year going to be putting out a children's book. Actually, it's more a young adult um, vampire kind of superhero thing and we're really excited to be working with this 12 year old authoress and her friend who wrote Aww. this book um, <laughs> nice. and so it's it's interesting what happens when you allow the universe to say okay you know mm -hmm. if, you, if you're ready here is here's the material oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. and so we even had to put up on our uh, website a, a disclaimer saying right now we're not accepting any submissions because we started to get people well if you do graphic novels we would love we have this project and we thought oh wait 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 wait, wait. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, we were, we're not at the level i mean the only staff really is myself my husband and our colorist uh his name was chris link um and it really it's wonderful to know okay when you say i'm ready the universe will respond oh yeah um, and it can respond in a big way <laughs> and it did, and we thought, we don't have staff yet. <laughs> so yet, yet, <laughs> yet, yet, exactly. Uh, so it's exciting, and so that is what Embon Point is, and we're really excited. Uh, we're very new, and we're building things up, but uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, um, and uh, but that's okay. We're up. For the, we're up for it. So that's who we are. That's amazing. Yeah, it's so funny how once you. You, you, you even just have to put it push it open just a little bit like just to put your your foot in and if the universe is on you know on board with you it's mm -hmm. going to flood through that little crack right absolutely <laughs> and it is and it's wonderful you know that's awesome 
Well, so what is on the horizon for you as a writer? I think I would like to, well, we will continue to explore our graphic novel business um, mm -hmm. and the projects that are coming up. Um, for myself, there are some projects that I've always wanted to work on. One of them is um, uh, a weaving of historical um, Mexico with our family's story of coming from Mexico to the United States. Oh. Um, um, but it's definitely a, a, a work that I want to work on. And people have actually asked for another Fattison, a whole other story. Um, oh, wow. And we have thought about that as well. And so if I didn't have my day job, and I'm blessed that I do, I uh, look forward to being able to retire and just do writing full time. Uh, so that is my, my, my end goal. Um, awesome. and, and I see it getting there. I see the path. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it took a while to find it, but I did, and, and so it's exciting. So that's kind of where I'm, where I'm heading, I think. I just had a little flash for you. Um, you can take this or not, but I feel like, you know, you were talking about doing the young adult novel. or Is, is that a graphic novel or a novel? Um, it is a regular, um, like, children's storybook with illustrations. Cool. What about even younger, maybe a younger version of a graphic novel for children so they can learn about body po positivity? I don't know if that's out there yet. It doesn't seem like... I don't think it is, and I think that's a wonderful, <laughs> a wonderful idea. <laughs> yeah, like that is in as a child or right. something. Right. Oh, my. <laughs> I, think, I think there's an awfully lot there to explore, and thank you for that insight and... Yeah. I think I see a whole other project, which is a wonderful thing, but wow, I love that. See that universe, it's, it's flowing. <laughs> I know, it is, and I'm open to it, and thank you. <laughs> but I, I, I love the idea, thank you. I love, I, I really do love, I, I, like I said, I'm a new fangirl for Delilah Palladino, and I do want to close my, my portion of interviewing you with saying thank you for writing her, thank you for writing Fatizen. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite quotes of hers is, um, uh, she's, this was when she was uh, taken into, the, into custody. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and she's being interviewed and she's being told by an officer, our weight loss professionals are trained to help you shed those unwanted pounds. And she says, there's nothing unwanted on my body. <laughs> I love that stands out for you. And uh, I... <laughs> Thank you. I, I love that that resonates. Um, yeah, big time. <laughs> and, there, and, there, and there shouldn't be anything unwanted on any of our bodies. Well, and, and it goes even beyond just the body itself. You know, just as a, as a person helping people with healing, that spoke to me. Because when people come to me with, like, let's say, cancer or a broken bone or a pain that won't go away, you know, it has nothing to do with, with being fat or thin. It's this thing in their body that they're angry at and, and they want to get it out. And, they, you know, and the first thing that I tell them is we need to learn to love that first, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. And then a lot of times it releases, you know, it starts to get better. The pain goes away, you know. So it, it speaks on many levels to me. But, yeah, that, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad and I'm, and I'm hopeful. And I know that it has from readers who have reached out um, that they have been affected. I think for a large part of large part of society, people have never had the opportunity to say that they love who they are, you know, in their plus size bodies. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's I think it, it's been taboo to even say I like this, you know, touching any part of your body and saying I'm okay with it and beyond being okay with it. I love who I am and I love what I see when I look in the mirror. And I think we need more of that. We need to let people have that, that uh, ability, that permission to love what they see. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we're at the stage of finally getting there with all of the advancements. And there have been a lot um, in the media regarding um, plus size acceptance um, mm -hmm. that it's even talked about now is mm -hmm. a big thing and I we have a lot further to go but mm -hmm. we're gonna get there I really believe oh. that yeah so thank you yeah thank you this was great <laughs>
So you and I are going to be speaking at book show later this month. Yes, we are on November 18th. It's a Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we're going to be kind of doing a more in-depth of what we did here and doing some readings from each book. Um, and it's at Book Show, which is at 5503 North Figueroa Street in LA, California, 90042. And I'm super excited for that. I think that's going to be a really fun time. It's going to be a lot of fun. We look forward to everyone who could make it. Um, book Show, it's if you're familiar with Highland Park, uh, it's right in the middle of Highland Park on Figueroa. Um, mm -hmm. Great little bookstore that actually has um, a Tarot Reader there and herbs and candles and all kinds of wonderful things. It's a great little treasure of a bookstore. Um, and they have been really welcoming to the writer community and so we're so thankful for Jen Hitchcock for uh, hosting our talk and um, it's going to be a lot of fun so everyone who can make it please join us it'll be uh, it'll be a blast and we'll you know we'll have some refreshments and it'll just be a lot of fun. Oh wonderful yeah I cannot wait and I would love to just put an offer out there to everybody to add me onto Facebook if you're not a friend of mine already or add Philip on you can find me at Kristen Dewan, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-D-W-A-N. And also the Healing Woods is on there as well if you'd like to see more about what I do. And Philip, you, I'm sure you're yes. talking to people the same. <laughs> <laughs> we um, you can find uh, myself and my husband, Mason Arago, at um, embodpointpublishing.com. There'll be a link um, you know, below this video on YouTube for anyone to click onto. Uh, we're also um, at Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. All the links will be there, um, you know, from our website. And so we, we're so thankful to have this time, Kristen. Thank you. Uh, it's been wonderful speaking with you. you and too. we look forward to everyone who can make it to our November um, uh, 18th. <laughs> and uh, again, it's been a pleasure. And. Look forward to everyone, and Kristen, again, thanks. Thank you. Alrighty. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.